World Cup downhill tends to follow a prevailing script. Each race features a connected series of occurrences. Riders from slowest to fastest change position on the hot seat as pretenders are replaced by contenders. What's the clock going to tell us? It's a huge run! Will it be enough? Sitting pretty in the hot seat at the moment. Looking nervously up the hill. But that is not always the case. This, of course, is called foreshadowing. It's a device used to tease viewers regarding plot twists that will occur later in the story. Kindly consider yourselves forewarned. You know I run the streets, live a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. Pride, I can mind find me. Always keep it cheap, you know I run the streets, live a fast life, you know what it's gonna be. and loads, friends, home stories. Been missing out two first years. Oh, he got, he goes down! Wow! So hopefully do well this year and change Aaron Gwynn's heads. Aaron Gwynn is the winner! There is no easing into a World Cup season. We've done more testing this year coming into the season. I feel pretty comfortable on the bike. No preparation can really be done for the roar of the fans. Yeah, it's been good to me over the past few years. I've had a podium each time we've raced here. No amount of pre-season training can really prepare for the weight of expectation. I introduce you to my best uh, fan. They always make the sickest uh, sign. And this is a new one for this year. I do look the same as the haircut. Hex keys, spanners, tire levers all part of a good mechanics tool set. But what distinguishes a good bike technician from the greats can't be found in a toolbox. Jack has all his experience behind him and it just makes it really, for me, easier for sure. Sometimes when I'm lost, I just trust him and it works. I push every corner. Max rebound. No, no rebound? No rebound. Just on the front? <laughs> yeah. Totally open? You know how I like it. Yeah. yeah. Many times the mechanic knows what setup a race bike requires well before the rider's confidence rises to those settings. I gotta give a lot of credit to Kevin for my riding last year because I know there wasn't much help in getting the bike fast for race days. The bike cannot be like comfy and fast. It's a race setup, so you need to, to be like this. With every tweak of rebound, with each adjustment in suspension compression, the search for a race course's unique settings is in reality a quest for confidence. So you can actually go do really efficient testing, whereas before I just like slap things on and be like, that feels pretty good. Without a mechanic, I I wouldn't be able to ride as fast as I do. Belief. It means different things to different people. Do you know what Lords is known for? The Big J. Shout out to Big J. <laughs> that's, that's one way of putting it. Yes, I do Regardless of religious affiliation, yes, for a racer, belief equates to confidence. Yes, 
and confidence equals speed. Rachel Atherton prepares herself. Will the winning streak continue? The last defeat in World Cup racing was here, but it was at the start of 2015. Definitely knows how to turn it on for a race run. Look at the pace he carried over the top of the wall and down it. Atherton comes down toward the finish line. Is this going to be a winning run? Atherton smashes it. 321.4 the time. The devil's got you beat. Tony Seagrave left at the top after this. Stop that winning streak continuing. Fastest qualifier last year. Fastest qualifier this year. Yet to win a World Cup. Seagrave goes across the line third. It's insane. The pressure just mounting and mounting. And I kind of wanted to be beaten this weekend because I, I can't take any more. It's, it's horrible, the pressure. That's 34 wins now for that woman there. 16 races in a row. We're coming into the season with a 29-inch wheel down our back. Right, right, the fucking big wheel. Greg is tall, he's old, and he has actually interest to have the big wheels, so hopefully he won't do it, but... It's amazing how a wheel size can affect people so badly. If you're new to the Great Mountain Bike Wheel Size Debate, allow me to get you up to speed. Prior to the early 2000s, mountain bikes of all religious faiths were equipped with 26-inch wheels. It was a time of peace and harmony with the entire mountain bike world united under one wheel size. Then came the schism. In 2014, the majority of World Cup downhill racers converted to 27.5-inch wheels, believing in the larger circumference's divine rollover capability. Here in Lourdes, a conversion to a new, even larger standard has begun. An orthodoxy that is either angelic or diabolic, depending on your point of view. Okay, you're up to speed. Everybody come and get it. There's enough to go around. Yep, get yours, get your mind right. You know, being six foot three, riding such a big bike, you're a little bit more centered in the bike and it just feels way more comfortable. I just hope that people will race to 29 and then I'll be able to beat them with 27. So I'll be like, go home with the 29 wheels. I hope so. <laughs> I get smashed maybe. I don't want that. And whether you're a believer or not, the clock tells no lies. Three 29ers qualified in the top six in France. Well, the next race is Fort William, so it's going to be a good bike for there, isn't it? Whether Greg wins or not, I think there'll be more come Fort William. There's one thing about racing in France, it certainly brings out the best in the French riders, and look at the pace of this man down here. What an inspired run by that man. He nailed those last few turns, that was incredible. Only a tenth of a second off that fastest qualifying time of Loris Vergier's yesterday. This is starting to look like Fayol's day, I'm going to say it. This is surely going to shake things up in this final. The Australian champion, Troy Brosnan. Yeah, if a rider like him is struggling, then you know it's bad up there. Greg Menard now on the most talked about bike in France. I don't think even Aaron Gwynn's going to swing this one. goes down hard. Oh, nasty. No one has the brilliance of this man in wet conditions. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Man, he goes down in a straight line. Even he can't turn it around here today. Bruni at the top, getting off the polished line there, trying to find some fresh, softer dirt. Well, it doesn't matter. The French crowd absolutely love him. The last rider then to tackle this bobsleigh track is Loris Bergier. 
on the 29 inch wheel. Oh, look how slick it is. At least all the good guys had friends. So we know when at point. Technology, athletic ability, and comfort with risk. All parts of typical race day plot lines. But then sometimes, someone or something goes and throws the script right out the window. And it's Alexandre Fayol becomes the first Frenchman to win a World Cup in France in nearly 20 years. Time will tell whether our season-long narrative has been irreparably disrupted here in Lourdes, or whether the race for the World Cup overall is set to truly begin in Fort William. Oh, look at the time! Oh, yeah. What's up, YouTube? Subscribe to Red Bull for more videos and click here if you want to watch some more action of the UCI Montebac World Cup and get loose with us on Red Bull TV.